അക്ക good morning my dear students uh today uh, i'm going to deal with uh, <coughs> uh the unit 4 which is left uh, uh before the the lockdown okay so let me just want to clear you uh what is the portion uh, that has been covered and uh, let me tell you what portion i'm going to cover in this particular session so as you can see here the unit 4 which is a syntax directed translation in primitive code generation it is actually it is going to have two components in this particular unit one is uh, the syntax directed translation and uh, uh, here we will be studying what is the definition what are what is the evaluation order and then application of syntax directed translation construction of syntax tree and so on and in the second part that is b part uh, where we will be generating where we will be studying the uh, intermediate code generation where it includes uh, the variants of uh, syntax tree three address code translation of expression and in this particular unit you have a self learning component as uh, control flow okay so uh, i think i have uh, covered uh, the part a of uh, unit 4 which is a syntax directed translation and also uh, some portion of uh, part b okay that is variants of uh, uh, syntax tree right okay now uh, let me just uh, uh, recall uh, the information what we had uh, regarding the uh, intermediate uh, code generation so in the whole of compilation process if you just see the uh, model there are uh, two parts one is the analysis model and uh, uh, the second one is uh, synthesis model the analysis model is actually a, a front end of a compiler the analysis model is a front end of a, a compiler right and uh, uh, the synthesis model is the back end of a compiler back end of a, a compiler now uh, if you just see the front end of a compiler there are uh, uh, four important uh, uh, phases starting from uh, lexical analysis to intermediate code generation so we have lexical analysis phase we have syntax analysis we have semantic analysis and we have an intermediate code generation now the question comes what is an intermediate code and why this particular intermediate code phase has been introduced in the whole of uh, uh, compilation process now here uh the the main objective of uh, uh, the uh, compiler is to generate the uh, target code okay which is the object code and this object code must be an efficient object code which is in terms of here the efficiency is in terms of uh, uh, time and uh, space okay so in order to facilitate this we, you can directly generate after semantic analysis okay you can directly generate the object code for a, a a source program but however however since code optimization is required to improve the efficiency of the object code the intermediate code phase has been introduced okay now what actually uh, you mean by an intermediate code using the intermediate code okay uh you uh, after having generated the intermediate code for the source program there is much scope uh, towards uh, code optimization so here the optimization may be a, a machine dependent optimization or the it it could be a, a machine independent optimization now the first thing is let me just uh, recall what actually uh, you mean by an intermediate code right so the intermediate code is nothing but it is uh, an internal representation used by the uh, compiler which is very close to machine instructions and it is independent of uh, uh, machine code now 
what are its benefits when we are talking about the intermediate score generation the question comes what are its benefits of course the main benefit is to have code optimization so uh, if you see the other details of uh, uh, the intermediate code okay it is a closer to the target machine uh, than the, it is very close to the uh, target machine and hence it is easier to generate the code form target code right so this is the uh, first benefit the second one is unlike machine language intermediate code is machine independent so this makes uh, this particular intermediate code is easier to retarget the compiler for uh, code optimization the second benefit it also allows a variety of uh, machine independent optimization uh, which includes uh, uh, loop uh, loop optimization loop unrolling okay uh, common elimination of common sub expressions and so on right and then finally the intermediate code generation can be implemented via sdts and thus can be folded into a par into parsing and type check that means here the generation of intermediate code can be done through an sdt that is syntax directed translation scheme which is a, a notational framework okay so according to this framework what we can do is uh, we have uh we have a, a grammar uh, which is uh, is a notation segma which is going to have a grammar which is an extension of a grammar right where you have uh, every production will have a, a semantic actions okay and you also have the grammar symbols uh, you also have the attributes for the grammar symbols and you can attach the semantic actions to evaluate uh, uh, the attributes and when it is evaluated okay uh, the uh, appropriate intermediate code is uh, generated uh, for the um, particular uh, source program right so these are uh, some of the uh, uh, benefits that you can have with the intermediate code the main thing is here uh, you can do uh, an optimization optimization could be an independent optimization or it could be a, a machine dependent optimization now uh, let me just uh, st before be uh, before we see the next uh, intermediate uh, uh, code which is the three address code let me just uh, tell you once again what are the different uh, types of intermediate representations we have there are actually uh, two types of uh, representations one is uh, the high level representation so this is going to express the high level structure of a source program right and is very close to a uh, source program source program and can be generated easily from the uh, source program so the examples of uh, high level high level intermediate representations are abstract syntax tree and uh, direct acyclic graph okay so this this particular high level representation is used mainly in uh, static uh, uh type checking okay uh second one is the low level intermediate representation so here this is going to express the low level structure of a a, a source program which is very close to a uh, machine which is very close to machine so here little effort is required to generate the uh, a uh, low level structure of low level representation of a uh, a target program so this includes uh, the three address code p code dyna and uh, the byte code byte code okay now let us now quickly move to this already we have uh, considered the direct data as a cyclic graph we have already uh, discussed this okay uh, then we also have written the uh, syntax directed uh, uh, definition with the synthesized attribute to generate a uh, dat for an arithmetic uh, expression okay so here is an sdt okay so i already discussed this so i'll just directly move to uh, uh, three address uh, code okay so three address code is one important uh, intermediate representation uh used by uh the uh, compiler okay used by the compiler right so it is basically built upon uh two concepts one is the address and uh, second one is uh the instructions so here 
here when we write a three address code statement there is only one operation is permitted okay so when we write a three address code we uh, there is only one uh, uh, there is only one operator is permissible if the expression is going to have more than operator more than one operator then it can be uh, divided uh, into several uh, sub uh, expressions so that you can have only one uh, expression only one sorry operator okay so this particular process is called as unraveling of an expression so for example see here i have a source statement x plus y into z so this is a source statement which involves okay uh, two operators so two operators are not permitted so this is divided into uh, several parts so one pos one possible division could be first uh, i i'm going to evaluate uh, the y into z okay in some temporary so i'll be writing three address code as t1 equal to y into z and uh, secondly i'm going to write uh, the instruction the three address code for addition operation which is going to take uh, uh, the value of x and the value of t1 and uh, which is stored in a temporary so t2 equal to x plus t1 so like this we can divide a complex sub expression into a sequence of uh, instruction so that there is only one operator per statement now here uh when we see the uh, as the name here it indicates uh as the name it indicates there are uh, three addresses okay so there are three address uh, there are three types of addresses possible in a, in a in a statement when you write a three address code statement okay it is made up of uh, three types of addresses one is a name so this name is a, a programmer defined uh, name which is in the uh, source program for a particular statement so name could be a variable name defined by the programmer for a source program and second address could be a constant second address could be a, a constant so here compiler must be able to deal with a different types of a constant it could be a string constant it could be an integer constant or it could be a um, Uh, boolean constant and uh, so on right and the third address could be a, a compiler generate, generated temporary so when we write a three address code we can have maximum three addresses and only one operation per statement if you have more than one operations then that particular statement has to be divided into several sub statements okay so that we can have only one operation per statement so here here you can also think of uh, this uh, three address code is a, a linearized representation of uh, uh, linearized representation of syntax tree or a, a dac just here uh, i have a statement okay i equal to i plus 10 i equal to i plus 10 is my uh, source statement so here though there are uh, three addresses okay there are three addresses here i is here the value of i is uh, assigned as i plus i plus 10 so there are three addresses okay but here there are two operations here there are two operations so so this has to be uh, divided so that there is only one operation per statement okay so here here is a sequence of three addresses so i'm going to just evaluate uh, first i plus 10 in some temporary okay so uh, there is only one operation so this cannot be taken as an operation because it is a uh, what do you call uh, 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 the re temporary registers are used to store the values which is in a uh, cpu okay so this assignment operation cannot be taken as an operation here so only plus can be taken as an operation so then you can have i equal to t1 so i equal to i plus 10 is divided into two three address code statements t1 equal to i plus 10 so if you just see the statement here maximum there are three addresses one is a compiler generated temporary programmer defined name and it is a constant and plus is the operation okay so here three address code is actually a linearized representation of a dag or a 
a syntax tree. So if you just see that DAG representation of uh, uh, i equal to i plus 10, it looks like this, right? It looks like this. So every interior node will have a, a, a temporary value assigned and which is going to hold the value of that particular operation. So it can be now written like this, t1 equal to i plus 10 and i equal to t1, right? So uh, like this, you can have a three address code statement uh, for uh, every stored statements. So when we write a source program, okay, when we write, when we, uh, when the compiler takes the source program, when it undergoes into an intermediate code statement, every stored source statement is converted into a, a sequence of uh, uh, three address codes. Okay, so now let me just tell you what are the different types of three address codes for every uh, source statement. So I have these categories of uh, three address code statements. Okay. So you have assignment instruction of the form x equal to y o p z. Okay. So x equal to y o p z. So here there are three addresses. Okay. X, y, z, which could be either compiler generated temporaries or it could be a constant or it could be a, a programmer defined variable. But maximum three addresses are possible and o p is any binary operator. Okay. So uh, this is what is the first form of uh, three address code statement. And then second one is the assignment of the form x equal to opy. So this is the second category of uh, three address code statement. Here, uh, there is only that op stands for a unary operator. Okay, unary operator, unary minus you can say, right? So x equal to opy. So maximum you can have three addresses, you can have less than that also. Right? So x equal to op y. So op is any uh, unary operator and x and y are again uh, the compiler generated temporaries, okay, constants or uh, programmer defined variables. Okay. Then the second type of uh, thread code instructions is copy instructions. So say x equal to u. Okay. So x is a memory reference. So the value of u, which is a temporary, temporary name, temporary name. Uh, the value of uh, u is assigned to x. So here there are two addresses and there is only one operation. That is assigning, assigning the value of u to x. So x is a memory reference here. Okay, and u is a compiler generated temporary. Right? Uh, fourth category is an unconditional jump. Okay, you have uh, go to L. So this L stands for the label uh, uh, for the three address code which is to be executed. So the control is transferred uh, to the uh, three address code which has a label L. Okay. Then you have a conditional jump. If X go to L, the way if value of X is true, then the statement at label L, the, the three address code statement at L, okay, is executed. This is the uh, fifth, uh, fifth uh, type of uh, the three address code uh, instruction. Then we have the conditional jump to, right? Here, if x relational operator y go to L. So here you can have any relational operator like uh, less than, greater than, less than or equal to and so on, right? So if uh, the value of this is true, then the control is transferred to the three address code where the label that is mentioned here. So this is conditional number, uh, conditional jump number uh, two. You have conditional jump number three. Okay. If false x go to L, that means if value of x is false, which is true. Okay. Then again, the control is transferred to the three address code where uh, uh, the L is a, a, a label. Right. Then you have the procedure calls, then you have indexed assignments, x equal to yi and xi equal to yi, and address and pointer assignments, x equal to and y. x equal to and y is the address of y. x equal to star y is the content of, star indicates the content of y, and, uh, and indicates the address of y. So here, x is a pointer. X is a pointer, and, uh, and y, you are going to take the address of uh, the variable y. And here, x is a variable, so you are going to, y is a pointer, right? And you are going to take the content of uh, y, that is by taking uh, star y. Star indicates the content of uh, uh, y. 
So like this, we can have uh, several uh, uh, types of thread address codes. So whenever a source statement okay, uh, undergoes into a compilation process, for every statement is converted into a sequence of three address codes. Okay, so the purpose of uh, generating the three address code, three address code is an intermediate code generation. Uh, sorry, intermediate code uh, of a source program, which is uh, uh, going to help uh, the compiler to perform uh, some kind of an optimization like independent optimization or uh, dependent uh, optimization. Okay. Now, let me just uh, uh, discuss a few of the examples uh, for source program and what is the uh, equivalent uh, uh, thread address code that is what is generated. Right. Uh, take the first example. Take the first example. So x equal to a into b minus c plus b minus c into d. This is an arithmetic assignment expression. Okay. So here, uh, the intermediate code for this particular source statement is a sequence of three address codes, and these are the possible three address codes could be generated. So let us first discuss how manually one can write a three address code for all these uh, type of uh, uh, source statements and then later we can discuss the syntax directed translation scheme to generate the these uh, intermediate codes for the given uh, source statement right so i have uh, x equal to a into b minus c plus b minus c into d is my source statement okay now when you scan this particular expression which is the first expression that is gets evaluated as you can see here b minus c is the first expression sub expression that is get evaluated okay so what is the corresponding thread code that you can write so you can store the uh, temp, uh, value of b minus uh, c in some temporary so the first type of thread code can be used that is uh, assignment statement, assignment instruction, which is a three address code, could can be generated for this. So I can write T1 equal to B minus C as my first three address code for this particular source statement because B minus C is first evaluated. Okay, because B minus C is first evaluated. That is, this B minus C is evaluated into some temporary. Okay. <coughs> Next. I will have uh, T2 equal to next multiplication of this with the value of this, which is in some temporary that is T1. So I have A into T2. As you can see here, this is again a assignment instruction. This is also an assignment statement. So why it is called as three address code? Because there are three addresses here. One is the compiler generated temporary. There are two uh, programmer defined names and there is only one operation so this equal the assignment is not actually an operation because it is done in internally okay cpu register is used to store the template so it cannot be it is not a memory ref memory reference is taken as a separate operation so here it is not a memory reference so it is just minus that is uh, subtraction is the only operation in this assignment so, so this is what is my a uh, thread code of first type that is assignment instructions okay <coughs> similarly here t2 equal to a into t2 so there are three addresses here this is not a memory reference okay uh, only one operation that is multiplication there are three addresses there are two compilers generated temporaries one uh, program defined so it is a three address code of type assignment instruction so this is the second thing that is done so before this operation is done again the right part of this is evaluated. So again, B minus C is evaluated with some temporary. So T3 equal to B minus C is my next three address code that is what is generated. Okay, then value of this T3 is then multiplied with D. So in some temporary. So T4 equal to T3 into D. So this is what is the operation that is evaluated at the end. Okay, if you just scan this whole source, pro I mean uh, the expression, okay. Uh, uh, this is evaluated first, so it is in some temporary. Next, this is evaluated, right? Next, this is evaluated. 
<coughs> next this is evaluated in some temperature then finally i can have t5 equal to t5 equal to this value plus this value so this value is stored in t2 okay and this value is stored in t4 so t2 plus t4 okay uh, is my three address code for this right now the final the value of the expression is t5 which is in uh, compiler uh, it is a compiler generated temporary is going to hold the value it is in a register now it has to be brought into the memory x okay so the final three address code that is what is generated is x equal to t5 which is a copy instruction the value of t5 okay he is is uh, moved to a memory referred by a variable x so these are the sequence of three address codes that are generated for this uh, expression so like this in the examination right you'll be given uh, a source statement you'll be given a source statement and you'll be asked to write a, a sequence of uh, three address codes okay and these are what are the possible uh, types of three address codes for mapping the uh, source statements okay so let me take the second one okay a equal to a equal to <coughs> a equal to b into minus c right plus b into minus c so this is an expression here uh, don't think that there is a syntax error here so star minus this minus c is unary minus unary minus okay so what are the sequence of three address codes generated for this so in order to find out the sequence of three address codes generated for this is first try to find out the highest priority level operator so in this case it is unary minus so when you scan the expression from left to right minus c is evaluated into some temporary so t1 equal to my first three address code generated is t1 equal to minus c which is uh, of uh, type which is of type uh, the assignment of the form x equal to op y where op is a unary operator right uh, next thing is in the next level after unary minus uh, uh, this will have the uh, the uh, highest priority operator okay so again this is evaluated in some temporary so t2 equal to b into t1 t2 equal to b into t1 is my next three address code that is what is generated so in the next level uh, in the next thing in the, in the next process you have this you have to evaluate this you have to be you have to evaluate this addition so before you evaluate this you have to evaluate star because unary minus is there it has got highest priority so again uh, uh, minus unary minus c is evaluated first into some temporary so my next temporary is t3 equal to minus c right and then t4 equal to b into t3 so i have the left operand for this the right operand for this left operand is t2 right operand is t4 okay so i can now then write t5 equal to t2 plus t4 okay so here all our compiler defined uh, a compiler generated temporaries and there is only one operation for statement okay now the whole value has to be assigned to a memory referred by a variable in a so you have a copy statement a equal to t5 so this is what is the sequence of uh, three address code that is what is generated for that particular uh, source statement okay so like this i have uh, examples i have another type of i have taken the arithmetic expression now i'm with, i'm going to take branching statement i'm going to take a branching state so if x greater than y expression is if x greater than y then x equal to x plus y else uh, x equal to else uh, z equal to x plus y 
थ्रेड इक्वल टू एक्स प्लस वन एक्स माइनस वन ब्रांचिंग स्टेटमेंट वॉट आर द करस्पॉन्डिंग ब्रांचिंग स्टेटमेंट ऑफ द्री एड्रेस कोड Okay, I should have. Uh, there are three types of uh, conditional statements, and one is a, an unconditional jump statement. So I must generate these types of three address code for this particular source statement, right? So uh, so this is what is my. Branching statement of my source program. Here the language is uh, Pascal language. Okay. Now, first before you eval before this z equal to x plus y is evaluated, this Boolean expression is evaluated first. Okay. So when this Boolean expression is evaluated, there are two possible there are two possible values here. One is either true or another is false. If x is greater than y, then z is evaluated as x plus y. Otherwise, z is evaluated as x minus y. Now, so in order to decide which one is to be executed first, I have to evaluate the uh, Boolean expression, which is going to have which is going to have a relational operator greater. Than. So let me evaluate the Boolean value of x greater than y in some template. So t1 equal to x greater than y so here this is of the form uh, an assignment uh, instruction right so this is an operator and uh, three addresses one is compiler generated temporary and there are two uh, two uh, program defined uh, variable names okay so this is my first three address code that is generated for this next i must have the i can have there are i can have for t1 either true or false if it is true then the value is value would be 1 if it is false the value would be 0 okay so if if t1 if t1 okay then go to statement number 10 where i have to evaluate z equal to x plus y right let us see uh, the statement at label 10 right Now suppose if this is false, that means if T1 is false, then the statement that follows this is executed. So what is that statement? That is z equal to x minus y. So I can. So since there are two operations here, is a memory referencing reference operation and subtraction. There are three addresses. Though there are three addresses, there are two operations. So this is divided into two parts. So my my first instruction that is generated is because if t1 is false statement that follows this entire if is executed that is what is this so i'll first evaluate t1 equal to x minus y okay and z equal to z equal to t1 z equal to t1 and after that okay i must transfer the control to the uh, statement that follows this entire if else okay so i'll i have to use go to some label let us say that label i'm going to write it later okay right now i will come to the uh, statement at 10 so i'm going to write 10 here okay so at statement 10 i have to execute z equal to x plus 1 right so again it is a complex expression i will evaluate uh, t2 equal to x plus y and z equal to Theta. Now, now, let's see what could be the label for this. Go to L. The statement that follows the entire if. Which is the statement that follows the entire? We don't know. Okay. So let me give the label as 20. Okay. So after else part, the control should come to uh, label 20. So I'm going to write label 20. Right. So just see the sequence of three address codes. I have evaluated x greater than y into some temporary, which will have a boolean value 
either true or false true is zero true true is one and uh, false is zero okay so if true i'm going to uh, label 10 where i'm going to evaluate z equal to x plus y so t2 equal to x plus y z equal to t3 and then after that the execution begins whatever the statements that are there that is at line number 20. now if this is true if this is false if t1 is false then I'm going to evaluate T1 equal to X minus Y, Z equal to 2, 2, and then I'm going to the label 20, which is the statement, the statement that follows the entire IFL statement. This is how the three address code that is what is generated for this. Okay, so like this, uh, there are uh, uh, there are many examples here uh, in the examination. Uh, you'll be given uh, such a source statement and. Uh, uh, you'll be asked to uh, you'll be asked to uh, write the sequence of three address codes. So there are some some of the examples here. Uh, here there is one looping statement. I'll be taking this particular part. So here uh, the statement. Now this is what is my source statement. Okay, so what is the sequence of three address code that is what is generated for this? So first, the value of i is evaluated. So i equal to i plus 1. Okay, the equivalent three address code generated is t1 equal to i plus 1. Okay, and i equal to t1. Right? Now, if you just see the condition at y, so this value is to be accessed. Okay, it is that you have an array reference. Okay, so when an array reference is there, first the index is calculated. First, the index is calculated. And how the index is calculated, that depends on the type of the elements that are being stored in an array. If there are, if the array elements are of type integer, okay, then, uh, then, uh, the, uh, then the uh, integer elements are spaced at 4 to uh, 8 bytes. Okay, so the index value is calculated as let us say i equal to i plus i into 8. Okay, i equal to i into 8 and then t2 equal to t2 equal to a of i i. Right, so here in order to get the ith element of a, I am going to first compute the index. Okay, index is how index is calculated, the index value and uh, multiplied with the size of the uh, array element. If it is an integer, it is 8 byte. It could be 4 byte, it could be 8 byte. If it is float byte, it could be 16 byte also. Okay, so multiplied by uh, 8, so you are going to get the index value. So my total reference would be offset plus index. So it is A of i. So T2 will have the i element, okay, of an array. So this must be compared with B. Okay, so then I can have if T2 uh, T2 less than V, okay, the value of T2 is then compared with V. If this is true, then go to label L, go to label 10, okay, which is 10 is the beginning of the loop, that is this. Okay, so like this we can uh, generate the three address code <coughs> for this uh, uh, I loop okay so tomorrow we will discuss uh, the other uh, uh, examples and then uh, we'll see how these uh, three address codes are represented internally by the compiler you have uh, three types of representations one is quadruple representation another is triple representation and you have third one uh, the indirect triple representation right okay thank you very much